I'm just too white and nerdy. Can't you see I'm white and nerdy? Look at me, I'm white and nerdy. I want... Hello, YouTubers. And denizens of the interwebs. Frosty Knives here. And today, we're going to do a little informational show and tell. Now, if you have been watching my videos, which you should, and if you have been watching my friends and fellow YouTubers videos, John D, which you also should, then over the time you have heard us use certain phrases. Uh, phrases such as scores, come ups, and lately, if you watch the video that John D and myself did from Rhode Island, the new phrase we invented, 40 double D. Now, you may be asking yourself, what do we mean by these terms? I'm glad you asked, and I'm going to tell you what we mean. Now, scores, hauls, come-ups, they're all interchangeable, and they all pretty much mean the same thing. 40 double D is sort of a term that John and I invented, and basically what it means is finding something, whether you're yard sailing, flea marketing, garage sailing, looking online, trolling the dollar bins, a 40 double D, and you'll, you'll notice I use this a lot, um, basically means finding something of great personal or financial value for very little money. It's a, it's a, it's a holy grail. It's, a, it's, it's finding that unopened box of vintage Star Wars figures from 1977 in the corner of your mother's basement that she never gave you. It's like finding that priceless Rembrandt painting stuffed behind that cheap ass Velvet Elvis you bought for your grandfather at a yard sale for two bucks down at Uncle Larry's garage barn. That's what a 40 double D is. And I have some examples. I have two examples from my personal collection that I believe would qualify and classify as a 40 double D discovery. One of them is rather recent. Uh, it's about a year and a half years old. The other item is something that I've had for a very long time. Uh, I've had it for probably 10 years, and it was something that I picked up when I started really actively collecting Transformers again. So, I'm going to show you both of those items, and that way you know what I mean when I say I found a 40 double D find. I found something that is really, really neat. So my last job was a retail job in a very small strip center in Vermont. And a couple of stores down from the place that I worked at was a consignment shop that was run by the local hospital. Um, and what these people uh, at the consignment shop would do is they would take donations in and they would price them and they would sell them and all of the proceeds they would go to the hospital and various other programs. Um, but more importantly, what they would do is every periodically they would go through their store and they would find the things that weren't selling and they would gather all the things that weren't selling things that they thought were junk and they would take them out back to the dumpsters and they would throw them away this is where the 40 double d comes in so one day i was out taking the garbage out and the cardboard and I always look in dumpsters. You know, don't tell me you don't look in dumpsters. You walk by a dumpster, uh, you look in it. I mean, that's kind of what we do. I don't know what we're looking for. Treasure, puppies, dead bodies, something. 
So, uh, I'm taking the garbage out, and lo and behold, I look in the dumpster, and what do I find? I find something. Now, let me just to clarify this, <laughs> I don't normally go dumpster diving, but when I do, it's for a Sega Master System. I found this in the dumpster. They had carelessly thrown this away. This is video game abuse, boys and girls. You don't throw this stuff away. So I found this in the dumpster. And I said, no, this can't be right. And I, I took it out because I thought maybe they had just thrown away the box for some odd and bizarre reason. But they didn't. And if you look here on the top, where is it? Flip it over. You can see the little sticker. There's a little round sticker on the top that says 27. Now, my, my guess is that they were selling this particular piece for $27. Or $2.70 and somebody just forgot to put the little dot in. And it wasn't selling, so, you know, for whatever reason, they pitched it away. But this is a Sega Master System in a dumpster. This is vintage, folks. 1988 Tonka. I did not know that Tonka and Sega were interrelated. Sega. This was from the third generation of video game consoles. This was put out by Sega to compete with the Nintendo Entertainment System. Technologically wise, this was a better system than Nintendo. It had more memory. It had better processors. It had better graphics. It was more powered. It never caught on. Nintendo outpowered them. I apologize, folks. Sometimes my Kinect randomly turned my Xbox on. I don't know. It must like the sound of my voice. But anyway, we were talking about the Sega Master System. Now, I know that old adage, you know, what you college guys and girls say, pictures unless it doesn't, doesn't or else it didn't happen. How do we know that there's actually a Sega Master System in this box? Well, you don't. But I'm going to show you that there was. And here, as I opened the box and I pulled it out, there is your Sega Master System. There's the base cons the console. There's one controller, two controllers, and a light gun. This is what it came with. This was the Sega Master System. Came with the power cords and came with it all. I haven't tried this yet. I don't know if this actually works. I'm assuming that it works, but I'm not sure. So here it is. And look, I'll show you what it came with. It came with the light gun and yes that does say light phaser phaser I don't know how they got away with calling this a phaser I thought Paramount had the lockdown on that term but there it is the Sega light gun which if you remember the Nintendo duck hunt gun this was a much better gun than what say, uh, Nintendo put out it's even got a little sight and everything so it came with the gun, it came with two uh, controllers, don't call them paddles, they're not paddles, they're controllers, anybody who calls them paddles deserves to be paddled, okay? But it came with two of the controllers, with the directional bot pad, two buttons, the power cord, sorry, I took it out of the box, I ate a piece of styrofoam, bizarre, and here is the system itself, the Sega Master System. Now you will notice that it has two ports, a port on the top and a port right here. That's because Sega put out two types of games, cartridge games, 
and games that were um, that were on cards. They kind of looked like credit cards. So the cartridge games were the higher powered games because cartridges could hold more memory. So the cartridges would go in here. The economically priced uh, card games, the cheaper games, the one with less memory, uh, didn't have a lot of sophistication to them, would go in here. And there's all the buttons on the front that to pause and play and everything. And you got your, your little power button over here. But I want to show you what else this thing had. There's a little thing right here. You slide this thing that open. And you're going to notice that there's a port. Do you know what that was? They developed an external floppy disk drive for this system. They never produced it. They never put it out. But they developed it. Ninth... 1988. Remember what I said, that this was more powerful than the Nintendo Entertainment System. They developed an external floppy drive that would have went into this port. But they never mass produced them. It was something they developed and they never used. And then finally, something else that they had. Some of their games were in 3D. Ooh, 1988. 3D. Eat your heart out, Michael Bay. That's right. We were doing 3D before 3D was chic, bitches. So you would take the 3D cartridge game and put it in here. You would take the 3D adapter and you would put it in this port. And slide it in like this. And you would put it in here. But then you needed something else. You needed... You needed to take this and plug it into here and you needed a really cool and swanky pair of Devo 3D glasses. Mm. Whip it! Mm. Now whip it good! Every time I wear this kind of stuff it makes me feel like it's 1986 all over again. Here's your 3D glasses. As you can see one side is broken. It came that way. I did not do it. It came that way. But you would put the 3D glasses on Plug it in, plug it in, put the game in here, and you could play the games that they offered in 3D in 3D in 1988. Yeah, that's right. We were way ahead of the curve. So, and the box does say that this game comes with two games, right? It says two games included. Hang On and Safari Hunt. But you didn't see a game cartridge, did you? No, you didn't. You know why? Because the two games are preloaded on the system. And there's also a hidden game on this system called Snail Maze, which was sort of an Easter egg. So, Sega Master System, 3D glasses, with the gun, and two games, and the control, with the box... All for the good old price of free. I have seen this system go on eBay anywhere from $15 to $25 for just this. Just the core. Just the system. I've seen these in boxes on eBay going anywhere from $500 to $800. Now, they do say that they're mint in package. Um, I'd, I'd have to see that to believe it. They are listed as mint and package. The $800 to $900 eBay listings are for mint and package Sega Master Systems. Um, but there, and there were a couple of different, there was a base system that came out. There was a master system that came out, which is this. And, but it came out in a couple of different versions, um, with different games preloaded. So I've seen this piece go anywhere from $15 to $500. To nine hundred dollars, depending on 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 the on the, the content and what they were selling. But I bet that I could sell this stuff as a lot and make a good chunk of money, and all for the good old price of free. That, my friends, is a double D forty double D fine. The second example I want to show you, uh, I got about, let's see, 11 to 12 years ago, um, maybe it's slightly longer. Um, 
My wife knew somebody from her one of her old jobs who was having a garage sale. And as usually happens, it was uh, a mom whose child had grown and uh, they were selling stuff, uh, selling the kids stuff off and, and, and whatnot. Anyway, she knew through my wife that I was into Transformers and that I was starting to collect Transformers. Now, at this point in, in my collection life, my... Um, my collection really only consisted of the little items that I had personally and some of the things I had started collecting, a Beast Wars I had started collecting. So uh, this would have been back in 1997, 98. I'm not even sure. It was a, quite a while ago. So anyway, so long story short, we go to this garage sale and uh, my wife introduces me to this uh, woman who's having the garage sale. And uh, she says, I, I hear that you're into Transformers. Now, don't know what you're talking about. Never heard of them. And no idea what a Transformer is. So <laughs> she says, oh, I hear you're into Transformers. Um, I, I was going to sell this in the yard sale, but I held it aside for you in case you wanted to buy it. She goes to the garage. She comes out with a um, plastic grocery bag. Of, of stuff, right? And she hands it to me, and I open it up, and I look in it, and, you know, I try to play things close to the vest. I don't want to be like, oh, my God, you've got an original Fortress Maximus in a box. Do you know how much that is worth? Because I've gotten burned in the past by telling people how much things are worth and what they have, actually have. So I, I, I try to play things close to the vest. So I open up the bag, and I go, hmm. There would appear to be a transformer in this bag, ma'am. Um, how much would you like for said piece? And she looks at me and she says, Would five dollars be too much? Here you go, ma'am. Here is your five dollars. You have a nice day. Much like the guy in seven who wanted to know what was in the box. What's in the box? I don't know what's in the box. You want to know what's in the bag? What was in the bag, Frosty? What did you pick up for $5 that you seem to be so excited about? I will show you. This is what I picked up for $5. She had a complete set of C-Cons. Not a complete set. Let me, we'll get to that. This is Piranacon. This was this was the sea cons. Now there's five of them. There was actually six of them. So you've got Snaptrap in the middle. He was the the turtle, and then you had Tentacill. You had Sea Wing. You had uh, Scalor, and you had uh, Overbite. And these were all uh, um, sea creature related uh, Decepticons, and they combined together to form. Piranacon, and the one you don't, I don't have, the one that you don't see is Nautilator, because this was, this was, uh, Series 6, produced in 1988-ish, Generation 1, this was the last combiner set that was put out and produced for the original Generation 1, um, line, this was Series 6, and Series 7 of G1 came out, and after that, they stopped making them. They went on to Generation 2, and then they went on to Beast Wars. So this was the last combiner, Generation 1 combiner, that they made. And there were six of them. All of the arms and legs were interchangeable. And the extra guy, the one that was left over, would become the gun. You could transform him, put him in the hand, and it would be the gun. Now, they were sold individually. All six of them, you could have purchased these originally as individuals. Then they produced a box set. But the problem with the box set was there was only five C-Cons in the box set. There wasn't six. Not a later, the one who made the gun was left out of the box set, which makes not a later, oddly enough, the most valuable of the C-Cons and the one that most people are looking for because my guess is what happened is that this child got this set as the gift set. Now, this was the gift set that he got, and he got it without 
the sixth Seacon without Nautilator. But they're all here, and if you look at that, you can tell, I mean, they're all here. The pieces, the head, the chest plate, the fists, the sword. I mean, it's all here, and it's all very little wear. And I've had this sitting on my shelf for years. And, you know, I'm not going to go ahead and transform it and show it to you all because this is not a review. Maybe one day I'll review this piece as a piece, but I wanted to show you my 40 double D Transformers find. And it came with, you know, there was all the extra little pieces that it came with. It came with these stands because you could take the C-Cons and you could turn them into a gun and you could plug them into these stands and make them freestanding guns for Piranacon to use. So this was $5. Now I just looked this fellow up in the price guide and near mint out of package, which this, I would consider this near mint out of package because this is, you can see there's very little wear and tear on here. There's very little uh, chipping, paint, scaling, you know, any, any defects in, in this. If anything, the joints on this are too tight which is not a, a problem at all. And the pieces are all here. So uh, in the price guide, near mint, which is what I would consider this to be, Snap uh, Snaptrap goes for about $70 to $75 alone. Now, I don't have a price for the price. I don't have a price for the uh, the gift set. They, I all have to price them individually. Snaptrap goes for about $70 to $75. And then each one of these goes for about $30 to $35. With the exception of Nautilator, I told you he was rare. He's about $40 to $45, maybe in the $50 range. But these here are about $35 to $40. So you're looking at a piece that's somewhere between $180 and $200 that I picked up at a garage sale for five bones. And this is one of my holy grails of my Transformers collection. This is the piece that I, you know, I, I tried to keep good care of. I tried not to, to, to play with it too much. I don't want it to get broken. I just sort of display it on the shelf just like this. And I walk by and I look at it and I go, yeah, that's mine for $5. Um, so, you know, like I said, I paid five bucks. I could probably turn around and sell that piece on eBay anywhere between $150 and maybe $200 if I got lucky. I don't know. Um, I've seen them on eBay for, for those kind of prices. Um, so, you know, I definitely wouldn't make that kind of money if I sold it to a chop shop or sold it to one of these retail jobbers. And, you know, they'd probably try to give me, you know, 40 bucks for the whole thing. And they'd, they'd turn around and they'd sell it for $180 or $150. Um, I have no intention of ever selling any of these items that I've showed you. But these are the items in my collection that hold the most value to me both personally and financially although I don't really think about it that way I think about it more as personal like these are items that I really like so those are my 40 double D finds my Piranacon he's so cuddly it's like he's like a little he's like a little Decepticon teddy bear you could just oh you could you could cuddle with him um so uh, Piranacon and my Sega Master System. Um, you know, these go into our collections. The video game collection is my wife and mine's, and the Transformers collection. We all, they're, it's our collection. We've all sort of just sort of melded everything now, and it's just become one giant collection. But this is what I'm looking for when I go yard sailing, when I go garage sailing, when I go flea marketing, and I'm thinking I'm going to find a, a a score, a come up. I'm thinking I'm going to find a 40 double D fine. This is what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking I'm going to find something like this for dirt cheap. That's what I have in the back of my head. So what about you guys? What are some of your favorite finds? What are some of the things in your collection that you're most proud to own and proud to have? What are your stories? Do a comment. Post a video response. Let me know what is in your collection that excites you a lot and definitely if I find anything else in the future that is equal to this I will let you know and until next time
We'll see you on the flip side.